Hi, everybody. Uh, so I want to take a little bit of time at the uh, midpoint of our week where we're focused on drafting um, to talk about inside out drafting. I reference inside out drafting or inside out uh, design in uh, some of the materials that you're going to be reading about this week. Uh, but I want to dip in and I want to think more specifically around excuse me, or about um, the ways that we approach the um, the drafting stage of our paper. In the earlier overview this week, I talked a little bit about this notion that um, a lot of times we approach writing as a top-down activity. And when I say top-down, we open up a new Word document, we start at the beginning, and we're like, all right, I'm going to write a paper. And we sit down and we write it. Um, this can be problematic for a number of different reasons, right? Because the way that we uh, happen upon ideas is much different than planning and structuring and organizing those ideas. That we, if we're going to create a rhetorical situation that's meaningful to our audience, what we really need to start with is we need to start a start with an understanding of the scope. Like, where do we want to take this audience? What do we want to do with them? What's our general purpose, and how are we going to meet that purpose? So, um, inside out drafting is just a way to think about this. And the way that we uh, we can think about it inside out drafting is almost like reverse engineering. So if you're watching this video, then you've already read all of the texts from the pre-writing phase from last week from module four. Um, and now you are in um, the drafting phase. Well, you created a whole bunch of different artifacts. You have your ETA sheets, you have your happiness reflections, you have um your discussion board posts you have all these different things that you can hopefully notes in the margins that you used and what you're really looking for is you're looking for some common threads that you see throughout your own writing or throughout the writing of others that you think is important or meaningful to highlight and so i'm going to demo this um for you here so bear with me and uh as just kind of a point of order as you're watching this, um, please feel free. Um, please feel free to uh, fast forward or highlight or excuse me, fast forward or uh, skip around or pause to capture anything that you see um, that might be helpful for you. So I'm going to create a new document. Oh, excuse me, I actually already have our documents. I'm going to unhighlight here. This would be the part that you would, I would invite you to um, fast forward through. Not sure why it's not letting me unhighlight. That's hard. So let's say this is the thesis statement that I want to um, that I want to feature in my paper. I want to focus on. So when I look at this, if you read through the thesis statement documents, it it answers the charge of the assignment, right? So the assignment is asking you to describe, uh, basically describe, create a definition for happiness. So this is an expository essay where we're uh, creating a definition for happiness. And um, it kind of passes the who cares test, right? The so what test. So happiness is more than just a feeling I put here. Happiness is having the freedom and desire to pursue goals that relate to your talents, identity, or sense of purpose. These goals allow you to transcend your immediate needs and contribute meaningfully to a larger reality. And you know, now that I'm looking at this, I might say, you know, why contributing to a larger reality is important. But for a provisional thesis, this is good, right? So it addresses the um, the prompt. So happiness is having the freedom and desire to pursue goals that relate to talents, identity, or sense of purpose. And then it talks about why we should care about that, what that does. And what I've done here is uh, I've highlighted a few different key terms, topics, ideas. Right, so I went through, and if I were to say, 
that this is the, the thesis that I'm going to use to uh, prove my essay, to, to, uh, to motivate my essay, then what I actually have is I have a, a series of steps built into this thesis that I have to do. Right. So I'm so number one, the first thing I need to do is I need to talk about how is happiness more than a feeling. And I know underneath this, I'm going to probably talk about eudaimonic, and I know I'm mispronouncing this or misspelling this, eudaimonic happiness versus hedonic happiness. I believe that was addressed in that Will Store article that we read. Um, I might talk a little bit about common conceptions. And I'm going to say it maybe something else, and I might actually reverse this. I might talk about common conceptions about happiness first, and then move into eudaimonic happiness with a quote, and that might be enough. So now I've addressed this. Right? I've addressed happiness is more than just a feeling. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to start a new topic here. Now notice I'm structuring this like an outline. You don't need to. But I'm going to start a new topic here. I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to give myself a prompt. Why is freedom? Ah. As you see me type, you understand why it takes me so long to get feedback. <laughs> um, I'm a terrible typist. So why is freedom important to happiness? I'm going to ask that question. And so underneath that, I'm going to say that freedom is important because it allows us to choose goals and um, paths that align with our values, align with our values. And underneath this, I might put that this is, uh, who said this? Will Storr is one that talks about this. I'm gonna put that Esfahani Smith in our conversation about purpose. And I'm going to say Sean Aker as he talks about setting these meaningful goals. And so what we see, now we're starting to build this outline. So we've said freedom. Um, I'm gonna put desire question. What does desire have to do? And I think part of this, and I'm not sure, maybe this can be a part of the conversation in uh, why is freedom important to happiness. So I'm going to make this a subsection. I think desire is important for happiness as I'm, I'm looking here because a desire to be happy indicates um, a need for a purpose driven life. I'm going to back out of this. And I'm going to move into pursuing meaningful goals. Related to talents. Values. Identity. I'm going to say is an essential. 
component settings. Now, underneath this, I'm going to say that I want to talk about uh, Mark Manson. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, freedom here again. And I'm going to talk about our projects. Oh, I'm going to, all right. I'm going to talk about uh, health and will store a better kind of happiness. And our projects as our purpose and our identity. And what I'm seeing here is these might actually be I'm going to separate this out. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the importance of transcendence. And so like the ability, so I'm thinking about the importance of transcendence. I'm thinking about the ability to see beyond immediate inconvenience. Or pain or discomfort. Seeing the value of um, of the big picture. And here I'm going to think about like, I'm going to think about Esfahani Smith. I'm going to think about uh, Manson, Mark Manson. Right, and there might be some. So I'm gonna stop. Oops, I'm gonna stop here. So now, what I've done basically is I have this outline that gives me. It takes this complex idea of writing an essay, and it breaks it into these smaller, more bite-sized pieces. And so I am nowhere near done. But what I can start to think about is I can start to think about paragraph structure. So my paragraph structure for each of these, and I'm going to separate this out, my paragraph structure for each of these topics that I'm addressing that are a part of my thesis statement, do this, hopefully I have better luck with this. For every topic I'm going to address, I'm going to use this five-part paragraph structure. Now I'm going to uh, reference this in other spaces, but the five-part paragraph structure. Where part one, oops, weird. Oh, I see. Hmm. So the first part is topic sentence. Then rationale. Then support. Explanation of support. And then a link to our thesis. 
And so for each of these, for each of these topics that I'm exploring, I'm going to use this five part paragraph structure. All right. So for my topic sentence here, I'm going to say something like happiness is often perceived <laughs> as positive feeling brought about by some kind of physical or emotional gratification. However, if you look at the way we discuss happiness on a widespread social scale, is, um, it clearly means much more. Okay, so this is my topic sentence or sentences, topic. Now my rationale, I'm gonna think about why, rationale means why, right? I have, you know, I have to rationalize why I need to do this. So I'm gonna say, um, because, oops, because happiness can mean so much to so many people. It's important to have a clear sense, clear definition of the kind of happiness we want to discuss. In this case, it is best to uh, refer to happiness in the Aristotelian. Never was going to get that right. Aristotelian um, framework. Here, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to support this. So Aristotle, a philosopher, a renowned Western philosopher and teacher described happiness in two ways. And then I'm going to quote. All right, I might talk about the eudaimonic and the hedonic happiness. So now I've given my topic sentence, I've given my rationale. I've supported this rationale. Now I'm going to explain my support by separating the notion of happiness into eudaimonia and hedonia. Aristotle allows us to uh, separate the uh, physical response from the more meaning based purposive responses. 
repulsive, no response, it was our um, repulsive concepts of happiness. So I, I'm not quite done with this, and, and for the purpose of, of this um, exercise, I'm not going to go through, but I've addressed my common conceptions. I've talked about eudaimonic happiness and hedonic happiness, right? And then I'm going to, I'm linking this maybe to why this is relevant to the reader and why this is relevant. But what's interesting about this is uh, my document so far, right? So I have the framework of a paragraph here. I haven't linked this back to my thesis. But my framework of the paragraph without my quote and without a completed thesis is uh, 150 words, right? 152, 132 words, right? So it'd be about 200 words if I finished up my length of the thesis and filled in my quote and filled out my explanation of the quote a little bit more. And if you go down and look at all the work that I still have to do, all I have to do is take this five paragraph essay structure and apply it and create a topic sentence, a rationale, a support, an explanation of support to each of the topics that I've indicated. And by the time I get down here, right, I'm going to be at uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I'm going to be at 1400 words. If I just do what I did here a few more times and link it back to this thesis, I'm going to create eventually, I'm going to create a hook statement. And I'm going to create a bridge to my thesis after my hook. Down here, I'm going to write a conclusion, which we haven't gotten to yet intentionally. Or I'm restating my thesis. Restate major points. And leaving the audience with a clincher, something to take away. Now, what I have right here would function just fine for the outline that I have set to be due uh, this week. Filling this out like this. So, so if I have a thesis and I have uh, two to three pages of developed paragraphs without an intro and without a conclusion, that counts as your uh, rough draft. So um, I've already gone a bit longer than I want to here. So I want to wrap up in terms of the video and, and please forgive uh, my terrible typing and talking to myself as I'm, I guess I'm talking to myself this whole time. Hopefully I'm not because you'll stick around to watch this. But um, you know, you can see that one of the things that we do while we create when we create a framework like this for ourselves is we really take the pressure of always having to think of the next point. You have a whole list of points that you want to address in order to, to access this concept that you've laid out. Once you have this, and once you string together a series of topics, your essay more or less propels itself to the conclusion. Right, so um, if you have questions, as always, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I will talk to you soon.